Welcome to our video about the T combo box component in Delphi. Now this video is very similar to the one that we've done previously on a T list box. So if you watch that one, a lot of the stuff will be similar. There's one or two things that are slightly different. So if you watch that, just scan through what you can. Uh, but let's look at the T combo box. Now, first of all, a T combo box is ideally suited like a list box to have lots of options, but you don't have a lot of space in your screen. So you want to almost have it in a retractable list box that gets minimized to a certain size. So that's what we would use a T, a T combo box for. So you go to your tool palette, your component palette on the standard to, uh, tool palette. There you'll see the combo box, the T combo box. And I normally use CMBX as my prefix for my combo boxes. So there we go. That's what it looks like on your screen. So if we go to the properties in the object inspector, you'll see there's an items property and you click on the ellipse and you will get this option where you can type in things into your, um, your lines, your different items, and that will then be added as different lines to your combo box. So if I do that and click on the button, OK button, your combo box will look like that when it runs. So you've got those three options available that you can select from. So let's have a look at how we can use it. Now, first of all, when you are adding items to a combo box, it's very similar to a memo control. Instead of dot lines dot add, you've got dot items dot add. And then whatever the text is in the brackets, that will be added to the bottom of the combo box. So whenever you do that, that's how you can add items to your combo box. So let's look at this. Now, if we've got the item index, the item index is the property that tells me the one that is selected. So in this case, which one is selected? Which, which number one is selected? Well, if you said one, you are correct. Now, some of you might have said, no, it's two. No, it's one. Why is that? Because the first option is always zero. Very similar to our radio groups. So the first option is always considered position zero. Then the next one would be a one and the green would then be at position two. So remember item index is the one that is selected. But remember the position is based on from naught until the last one minus one. If nothing is selected, the combo box's item index will be a negative one. So if you didn't select one of the options, then item index would be a negative one. So let's say we want to go get the value of one of those values in the combo box. Now, if I say the combo box, whatever its name is, dot items, and then in square bracket, a number, that'll go fetch the value at that position. So position two, which one is that? That is the green one. Yes, because the red is zero and yellow is uh, one and green is two. So there we go. If you remember, red it starts at zero. So that's how you get a particular value from a combo box. However, if you want to go and get the one that is selected, so we want to use the item index, well, we can store that in a variable that tells me this is the number of the one that is selected. And then in this case, it's a number one because yellow is number one, red is zero, yellow is one. Then we want to go fetch the value at position one, which means we can go get the combo box dot items and in square brackets, the value that is at that item index. Now, there we go. That'll go and fetch the value yellow into S temp. That's how we can find out what is selected. Now, you could do that all in one line, um, but be very careful. Some people like to do this. They go the combo box dot items and in brackets item index. No, that's wrong. Don't do that. Why? Because you don't know what that item index is. It could be an item index for a combo box. There could be a list box. There could be a radio group. Which which item index are we referring to? You must be specific. So you got to say the combo box dot items and in square bracket the combo box dot item index. Must give it the full. If you don't like that, rather break it up like we've done in the step before. Okay. Now there is another option. There is a dot text property. Now, you most of the time, I like using the .text property. It's very simple. It's very easy. It will go fetch the text of the one that is selected. However, if nothing is selected, then it'll be whatever the default is there at the top, like that CMBX colors, that'll be what is goes in there if no one is selected. So you can use the .text property if you want. Most often, people use the text properties. Now, that's the main difference between this one and the combo box. Then if you want to insert into a combo box, like we know we've added to a combo box. Now, if you want to insert at a particular position, so you can just go and put that. So you give it a number and then the value that you want to insert. So insert at position one, the value blue, that will insert it at the second place. Because remember, zero is the first one. Index of, very similar to the list box, that tells me, yes, or tells me the position of the value that we are searching for. So if I give it a value, it goes, that value is at position what? in the combo box. So for example, if I've got a combo box and I go, okay, what is the index of red? Red is at position 
zero because that's the first item so it will return a zero if i'm looking for stuff like pink you'll see there's no pink in the combo box so that will return what is the option of not being selected at all a negative one so that can be quite useful if you want to do some error checking and say if the value equals negative one then it's not in the list so you can do that other properties are the count property that tells me how many items are in the combo box now that doesn't tell me the value of the last one it just tells me how many values so be careful of that so if there are for example seven items in the combo box it'll go from naught until six so it will always be one more than the position of the last value so count will tell me exactly how many values are in the combo box then we've got clear which will just clear the combo box take whatever's in there and remove it then we will have the delete where you give it a val a number and it will delete at that position so if you want to delete the first one you could say delete at position zero or if you want to delete the third one delete at position two so that will remove that from the combo box and then load from file which means whatever is in that text file will then be taken and put into the combo box now the little rule about this just take note that the text file must be in the same folder as your delphi files for this to work Okay, so, and then there's also a save to file option, which means take whatever's in the combo box and put it into a text file. That text file as well will be saved in the same folder as your Delphi files. Okay, so there we go. So let's go look at a couple of how we, examples of how we can apply this to a Delphi program. So here we've got a program. We've got a little combo box called CMBX Colors. And if you come here to, if you click on it and we go to the options over here, we will see the items. There we go. There's the items. And we can click on it and there you can see the items that are in my combo box so when i run it you can see it's red yellow and green so there we go so those are my options so let's see how we can use this first of all we want to display the choice which one did they did they display so we want to display which one they they gave so s input is going to be the one that is selected so if you want to break it down into two steps our pause cell which is the one that is selected I must first find out which one is selected. Uh, pause cell equals to the combo box dot item index because that will tell me which one is selected. Then the input will be the combo box dot items and in square bracket zero would be the first one, one would be the second one. Well, our uh, pause cell will be the one that is selected, and then we can just say show message s input so there we go so get the one that's selected go get the value at the position of the one that's selected and display it so that's how you can get it as a form of input for your program so if you want to select yellow you can go display choice go yellow and if i want to go select red it displays red however let's just take note of the following if i close this if i run it again and i don't select anything you see displays nothing because there's nothing there to select okay so what you could do is you could use for example we could not do any of this and we could just say s input is equal to the combo box colors dot text which does exactly the same thing however this is the slight problem with it so if you go and select yellow it does it works exactly the same way it's as long as so much quicker why don't we just do it this way display yellow let's go and choose a different one let's create it why don't we use it the reason why i don't always use it is because when you run it and you don't select anything it'll just display that cmbx colors which is not what you want for an input so the ways to get around it um, is you could either do something like this you could say if the combo boxes item index equals a negative one then you can display a message say show message please select an option else and then you can do this whole part begin display it and end so that would be an, one way to avoid them from not selecting anything making sure that they selected something so you could do that so, uh, so if i don't select anything it goes hey please select an option and then i go okay well there we go there it works that's one way another way that you could do maybe you could do something like this where you click on the on the combo box and you actually go and set the item index to a default value so the item index you can set to a zero 
So if you set that to zero, then that way it's always got one that is selected automatically. So then it doesn't matter if it, it'll never be negative one because it's already got one selected. But you can change it to a negative one because maybe, just maybe, you want your text, you got your little text there, you'll say, please select. You actually want some text like that. So maybe you want that. So little things that you can do. So just be careful of that if you want to display your choice. Okay, let's look at other options over here. You want to add an item, let's add pink. It's very easy. You're going to click on, we've got the value from the, from the edit box and you can go combo box dot items dot, dot add. And we want to add S input. So whatever the value is in that, in that edit box, add it. So if we add it, boom, and now I click on select, you see pink's been added. Okay. So now if I add blue, add item. Blue has now been added to the combo box. Okay. Maybe we want to add it to the top. If that's the case, we want to go, instead of using add, we're going to do insert. And that needs two values a position. Oh, put insert on. So a zero followed by S input. Okay. So there we go. So insert takes in a number and the value that you want to input, input at that particular position. So at the top, at zero, input that. If I want to do the second one, I'll put it at one. So in that case, if I run, if I add pink, and then I go, look, you see how pink's been added to the top. Now, what happens if I want to, I don't want to add it if it's already there. Well, then we're going to use the index of. So if I do that one, let's look at that. So if the combo box colors dot index of, no, it's items dot index of if index of input which means the position of what we want to input is equal to a negative one that means whatever we add in is not there then we can add it then add it to the top else if it is if it's a number that's not a negative one which means it's already in the, the combo box then we can say show message already in list so you can do something like that so so we check if it's there if it's a negative one that means it's not there we can add it at the top if it is there say hey don't add it we want to say hey it's already in the list so if i click on pink and i add item it's at the top but if i add it again it goes hey no it's already in the list and if i type in red it's already in the list but if i type in blue it'll add blue to the top so there we go so that's how you can add items and use index of now the remove item we're just going to go and remove a particular item we can say combo box dot items dot delete not destroy delete and then in bracket the value that we want to delete so i'm going to delete the first one i'll delete zero okay and then if i delete it if i go remove item if I click there, you see it's only got two items left because red's been deleted. So that's one thing. If I wanted to ask them to delete one, so they'll say, hey, I want to delete yellow. I need to find out where yellow is in it. So therefore, I'm going to go delete. I need to find its position. So I pause of type integer. Where is yellow in the combo box? So I can say R pause is equal to is equal to the combo box. Which which formula do which Control to be used, combo box, color, oh, no, not that. Dot items, dot item, index, index of, there we go, you got it, index of. And then we're going to say S input. So go find where is yellow in the combo box, what is its position, and then go delete our pause. Okay, so if we do that, so if it will look for where yellow is, get its position, and then delete that position. So we want to remove yellow. Do you see yellow is gone? But if I want to remove pink, it doesn't do anything because there's no pink there. But if I want to remove red, I'll remove the first one. So there we go. There's only one thing left in the combo box. Not a very good combo box if there's only one option there. But there we go. Okay, so that's remove item. And then we want to load and save. I'm going to add a new combo box to my list of here. So let's add one. And then I'm just going to change its font and name quickly. So I quickly added one, changed its name, and changed its font. If you go look at the items, go to items, there we go. 
click on there, click on the ellipse, you'll see there's nothing in there. However, in my folder over here, I've got a folder called food, which has a whole bunch of like things like bread and that in. So if I click on this, I can say the combo box, not combo box, new, because it's my new combo box, dot items, dot load from file. And we want to load from the food.txt file. Okay, so let's load from the food text file. So whatever's in that text file will be put into this. Comp At the moment, there's nothing. But if I load it, and now I'll click on it, there's all the food that we've got. Oh, I could do some jam. Okay, so there we go. And then the save would be, let's say we want to, on the save, we want to take whatever's in here in the, the colors one and save it into a new one. So we're going to go click on save. So we're going to say the combo box colors one. We're dealing with the color combo box. Dot, is there a save option? No, you've got to go dot items dot save to file and uh, colors dot txt. So at the moment, if you look there, there's no colors text file there, but we save into colors. So we're going to go Let's run it. So we know that we've got three things. Let's add pink. So we've added pink to the top, and now we're going to save it. And if we close this file, and let's go look. You see, there's a color TXT. Let's click on it, and there you can see all the colors that we added. So there we go. There is combo boxes in a nutshell. As I said, very similar to list boxes. Go look at our list box video if you're not too sure as well. And now you can use combo boxes in your programs. For other videos on RT-related content like computer literacy or programming in Delphi or other things like that, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.